Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dr. G. We are learning about labor economics and this is labor supply chapter, chapter 2. We are in part 11. We are going to now talk about labor force participation decisions. Should I even work at all is the question workers are asking themselves. So for instance, there is something called a reservation wage, the minimum wage that I require to be working. Below that wage, I'm not going to be working. Okay, so let's learn about labor force participation decision to work or not to work. So far, we assumed everybody was working, right? But some workers do not participate in the labor market. So are terms of trade sufficiently large, attractive to bribe worker to enter the labor market? Let's talk about reservation wage. Reservation wage is the lowest wage rate that would make the person indifferent between working and not working. Okay, so that's the lowest wage you require to be working. You're indifferent, but you're going to choose to work. Anything below that, you're not in the labor force. Rule number one. Okay, these are the rules about decision to work or not. If the market wage is less than the reservation wage, then the person will not work. So my reservation, which I'm going to call this WR, is let's say I am a worker. I'm not going to work for less than $15 per hour. If the ongoing market wage rate is $12, I am rather going to stay at home and take care of my puppy, which is behind me, literally sleeping right now. I got to show you guys. Kiki, hello. I think you can see him. I'm not sure. So if the market wage rate, $12, is less than the reservation wage rate, I'm not going to work. Rule number two, the reservation wage increases as non-labor income increases. So if I had a higher non-labor income, then I would be actually have higher reservation wage. Imagine a worker who has... $1 million of rental income per year. To get this person work, you need to pay this person a lot of money versus $0 of non-labor income. Let's say you have no other income, all right, which is true for most people. We're going to have a lower reservation wage than compared to the case where we have, let's say, $10,000 non-labor income per year. Okay, graphically, reservation wage is the slope of the indifference curve that goes through the endowment point, that endowment point. Okay, so we're actually going to cover part 12 as well. All right, let's see the reservation wage, the wage rate that makes a worker indifferent between working and not working uh, graphically. All right, so... Consumption is here, y-axis, leisure is here, t is total time, it could be 110 hours. This is my endowment point, so I'm not, I don't even need to put a budget line. You just need to know the indifference curves of this person, right? So let's say I have steeper indifference curves, leisure, consumption. So I'm going to find the indifference curve that passes through this point. So for instance, for this specific individual, okay? U0, this indifference curve passes through the endowment point. So we're going to look at the slope of this indifference curve exactly at this point E. This person's reservation wage will be right here, negative WR slope. Okay. So it this is a utility if a person doesn't work at all. U0 shows you the utility the person gets if you don't work at all. So you're indifferent between working and not working. This has a slope of negative WR. I put R uh, as a subscript. It can be superscript. So any wage rate, market wage rate, W low, that has slow le slope less than this dark red uh, line with a negative WR slope, right? So for instance, a budget line, a market wage rate that has GE, right? This is a low wage rate. This person's not going to work. It's too low, okay? So, for instance, 
if you work, you can achieve point X. Point X is on such a lower indifference curve. So if you worked, actually, your happiness will be, utility will be lower. Any wage rate that's higher than WR, remember, WR is here. So any budget line that gives you a higher slope, WR, uh, W high, which is greater than WR, you're going to be working. Why am I working? Because look, you can actually achieve an indifference curve that's higher than the U0. So you can see it, right? So this is how we determine the reservation wage. You will work at W high wage rate, but not W low. So you'll work if the wage rate is greater than or equal to this WR reservation wage. And you won't work if the market wage rate is less than, so your reservation wage is $15. They're offering you $3. I'm not going to work. All right. So again, graphically how do we find the reservation wage you just all you need to know is to find your endowment point you know you have lots of indifference curves infinite numbers millions of indifference curves all of them are parallel convex to the origin downward sloping find the one that passes through your endowment point and find the slope right at that point so Find the slope here. Negative WR, that's your reservation wage. You will work if the wage rate is greater than this slope. So anything steeper than this, I'm going to work. Anything steeper, higher than this. So this is negative WR. Anything greater than this, I'm going to work. Anything less than this, I am not going to work. 